Hey guys, welcome back to Max TV Regional. Uh, still settling in at the new place and working on the workbench, but at the moment I've got a drop screen behind me for the projectors. And I got it on Facebook Marketplace for free. Uh, it said giveaway for a good home, so I thought I'll grab it and of course it didn't work. Well, it works, but not fully. It's still got a malfunction. So if I press down, you can hear this noise coming there right now and the screen is actually like yeah it's not coming down if i hit the controller box it comes down and then it'll be glitchy again it'll stop uh there's a funny noise coming out again from the box uh, so going up there is no problem you go up it has no problem at all so i already know that it's a relay because if i shake the box i can hear a metallic noise almost mechanical noise inside so there are two relays inside one is responsible for going up the second one's for going down and the one that is going down is obviously either worn or broken i'm not sure what's wrong with it so we might as well just move to the bench right now and have a look what's wrong with it so here we've got the controller and I've already got the relays because I've been inside. So here they are two little relays, which is um, 12 volts and they are um, single pole dual throw. So let's open this up and have a look what's inside. So the cap, I'm, I assume I didn't get the back plate, but I assume that's something to that clips on the wall. You know, you just slide it on the wall. So that just pops off easily. And inside we've got a circuit board. Here it is. So we've got a linear power supply, fuse, um, bridge rectifier. Here, a little voltage regulator, which is uh, 78L05, so 5 volt, uh, 5 volt voltage regulator, decoupling caps, electrolytic. Uh, then we've got three buttons, the two relays. Actually, I'll try to see if you can hear it when I tap it. You can hear the rattling inside of the relays. A little beeper, LED crystal. So I assume there's a, where does that go? Here, so that would be the microprocessor because it's running the crystal at 4.8970 megahertz. A stop button up and down, a couple of transistors, diodes across the relays. So anyway, we will be replacing those two relays. So I'm just gonna desolder it and uh, put those in. And then we'll open the relay up and have a look what's inside. After removing the relays, I've realized that one relay is actually a single pole single throw, and the second one is a dual uh, single pole dual throw. So I've got both dual throws. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snip one of those legs on this relay off. Uh, even though, there we go, this relay, which is, uh, I believe, the dual a single pole dual throw relay is the one that switches the direction of the motor while the single pole single throw just turns it on or off so this one is working as you can hear i'll, I'll tap it and it's fine this one which is the switches direction you can hear rattling inside so i'll uh, put those new relays in and then we'll open up that uh, rattling relay and see what's going on inside the new relays are in, sitting there nicely and uh, great. So we're going to put this back together in enclosure. And before we test it, I'm really, really curious to see what went wrong with the old relay. So I'm just going to pop that in, make sure LED sticks out. Yep. That's in. Back cover goes back on. Funny thing, it actually says here that... Um, uh, on the back that this is 220 volts AC 50 Hertz and then it says it's max power 500 watts and I don't know if that uh, will actually draw 500 watts but anyway so that's assembled so let's uh, check out this relay I'll go up close so we can see all everything in detail and uh, then we'll go and test the screen out so I'm gonna start nibbling on that All right, so we're in. I think the relay may have actually overheated because this top plate is slightly bent. It's, it's out of shape, actually. And it's not fully making contact with the top. That's the problem. 
so if I grab something and push it up you can still you can it still can go up just a tiny bit so for normally open position the magnet electromagnet will magnetize this and uh, there's no problem because of the magnetic force holding it firm to the contact but with normally open it's that spring and you can see that play that's what was causing all the problems and i think it may have overheated like i said you can see the bend in uh, in this little spring here it's actually quite small magnet uh, electromagnet for 12 volts but anyway so that's the problem now uh let's go outside i'll check that out and let's go outside again and uh, plug the screen in see if it works the screen is now fully finished and if I click the down button, as you can see, no problems, no clicking, no rattling, it just comes back down. So that, that screen's done. However, I will have a little bonus footage. I also have a second screen that I purchased from Amazon and it's just got a toggle switch. This one's got a digital control, as you can see, it's with uh, tactile buttons. The other one is just a toggle switch with a three position, um, you know, on, off, on. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be modifying it to make it work with the projector out trigger output. So this way, uh, when the projector is on, the screen will drop, drop down. When the projector is off, the screen will automatically go up so without you actually controlling it. So uh, let's get that other screen on the bench and uh, see what we can do. So here's the cord itself. So you've got a standard plug. In our case, it's an Australian plug. And we've got this manual switch. Uh, which is up, stop and down. So you don't need really a stop unless you have an emergency. So when you press up, the screen will wind upwards and then once it reaches its uh, end of travel, it'll stop. And same with the down, once you put down, it'll, it'll reach its end of travel and then it'll stop. So we're gonna modify this to work with the uh, uh, trigger output with a projector. So like for example, uh, this one that I have, uh, is got trigger out or this one that's got remote that's for the screen so when you turn the projector on the screen will drop uh, when you turn the projector off the screen will retract so this one is the cheap one from Amazon it was hundred bucks so let's um, get this modified I'm gonna be removing the switch uh, this switch is redundant uh, you know you don't want to relay it it's I've already spoiled it it's gonna have a relay inside because uh, if you say you have a relay in down position and you put this in up, you may have some troubles. Uh, though also just wanted to mention, the screen itself, I will show you a little trick uh, that they have for adjustment. If I can get the screen, because it, it is very long. And I will try to get it in shot. Okay. There. Almost in shot. So if you have a look. If you see there's a red bolt in there, right there, it is really hard to see. Let me try lifting it. There. That takes an Allen key and there's a white one. So the white one up there, it's for adjustment of the uh, retraction of the height. So see how it's got a little bit loose there? If I turn it anti-clockwise, when the screen retracts, it'll be even more loose, like that far or even further. The red one is the stop of the bottom when it fully retracts. If you don't want to fully retract it, just turn it counterclockwise and it'll be shorter and shorter. So with the top one, when you're adjusting it, uh, let's say the screen hanging, hanging and it's closed, start turning it slowly and you'll see the screen just go up in, in a bit more and in a bit more and so on. So turn it opposite direction and then go down and up again and it'll get shorter. So this is handy if you're building a screen into the ceiling. Obviously that needs to hang a bit lower. So that's when you use those screws to adjust the uh, retraction and, uh, you know, opening height. So that's to calibrate that. A lot of people don't know and the manual doesn't say what those screws are in there. This screen's brand new, so it works fine, but again, I want it to be hooked up to the projector. So let me just place it down. Okay, let's open it up. So there's a sticker and I assume that there are screws hiding behind there. At least it's not a cheap paper, it feels plastic a sticker. Okay, that works. So I'll get rid of this. Yep, two screws. Let's have a look inside. I got a feeling it is just a simple, uh, before I have a plan in my head well, how I'm going to modify it, but you know, 
just in case if I'm wrong, I want to have a look inside first. So, just like I predicted, not much else here. So what we have is a, a single pole dual throw switch. So you got uh, on, off, on position. And of course, we've got uh, four wires going, three wires from mains, um, active, uh, neutral, and uh, earth. And uh, to the screen, we've got four wires, which is uh, one direction, counterclockwise, anti-counterclockwise, common, and earth. So, the best way of doing it would be, is with a relay. So, I will be replacing this switch with a relay, which is a single uh, pole dual throw. So, obviously, we have a common contact, which will go to load, uh, well, to active, and then we got up and down to those two contacts. So, when relay is in a normally open state, or just off state, with no, when the relay is not energized, uh, it'll be always in closed position. When the relay is energized with 12 volts, it'll obviously switch uh, into open position. And once the screen fully opened, it'll stop and no problems. Once you remove the 12 volts, the screen will obviously retract. So that's the plan. Uh, I, because of the space here for that switch, uh, I'm thinking of putting just a normal switch like that. It'll fit here just fine, hopefully. Yeah, and it'll be just main switch for um, main power, so I'll have line going through it. I'll see if I can find a smaller relay to fit it in here. I don't think this one will fit anywhere. Uh, and uh, yeah, that'll that'll look really nice. So that's just a main power switch for it. And we have uh, relay, and then I will have obviously diode on the input. Uh, and the standard 2.2 and by 5.1 barrel plug and that barrel plug will connect with a cable directly to the uh, trigger out with the projector so once you apply 12 volts here the screen will open remove 12 volts screen will close so let me just uh, find uh, i don't know maybe i'll find a better box and i'll keep this one separately to fit the relay and the barrel plug and the switch and i'll be right back so here is the ready uh, device with the relay as you can see here i'll grab something to point with so we've got a, just a normal single pole, single throw switch just to power up. And we've got the mains going, uh, active goes into the switch. From the switch it goes via this cable here into the common of the relay. Then we've got the black cable, which is usually down. And that goes to normally closed. So when the relay is de-energized, uh, the power should go through the switch uh, into the relay and into the black cable. And then the brown one is to normally close, uh, normally open, which is uh, your um, down. And uh, once the 12 volt goes through here, so it's almost like a voltage free relay, uh, it goes into relay, relay clicks, and then the power goes through the uh, switch into the common out of the second one, which is normally open, and into the brown, which will pull the screen down. The main, uh, I've used this uh, barrel, which is your standard 2.2, uh, 5.1 barrel, uh, directly into the relay with a little diode. The marking side should be facing positive and the barrel side should be negative. So that's it. There's no other voltage on that side. So that's literally, <laughs> you can call it voltage free um, in reverse, kind of. So yeah, that's it. Um, I've put the relay on the double-sided tape. The switch is sitting here just fine. So let's uh, put the top cover on, see what it looks like. There we go. So that's our projector input. Just 12 volts, so any 12 volts will trigger it. And that's just a main power switch. And that's it, I'm gonna put the sticker back on just uh, for the sake of it to cover the screws. I'm not sure that matters. And there we have it. Now, there is, I'm gonna draw the schematic for it as well, and then we'll test it out with just the 12 volts in. So you can uh, actually do a few things. This version that we've done can only be operated by the projector. So if you, for whatever reason, wanna open the screen manually without the projector being on, you can't. You have to either apply 12 volts to the barrel or um, turn the projector on. 
So here's a few things that you can do. At the moment we have configuration, we have uh, mains coming in, so we got um, um, active, neutral, earth. So earth obviously goes straight through to the projector. And we got two here, so uh, that goes neutral, that goes uh, down, and that goes up. So at this stage, the neutral goes straight through, and we've got our relay, which is here. And I'll just draw it this way. And normally closed normally open and that's common so that's our configuration currently so as you can see uh, neutrals through and that would be obviously the relay to the coil with a diode and that's 12 volts so that would be triggering so once you apply the power it switches from up to down once you turn the projector off it clicks back up now if you want to do a uh, both, let's say, um, motorized and not motorized, you can add a small power supply and just add a little switch. So what you do, exactly the same configuration, but from the relay, so let's say that relay is not here, let's say it's coming through here. We've got the coil, uh, diode, then here we will have another two diodes, They will be common. This one will go to a small power supply. I'm just going to draw it as a box and say PSU, 12 volts. Uh, that would be going to uh, joining with the mains like uh, load and neutral or active neutral. Here we have uh, 12 volts in ground. And this one will go to a little switch. And to 12 volts. This diode will be going to the barrel. And that would be 12 volts in. And this one will be common obviously i'll just jump it through here to ground so that can go to the projector so what happens is uh, once you connect the projector the 12 volts obviously ground is common going through this diode and into the relay uh, triggering the screen or if the screen is off you have that switch with a power supply which is common with mains uh, of the screen uh, you can just use a tiny little power supply. You can build one probably with just a capacitor dropper just to trigger the relay. Actually, I wouldn't recommend capacitor dropper. Use the insulated one. Uh, that would be for safety because that is going to the projector and ground is common to the projector chassis usually. So you don't want uh, 240 uh, or any mains on that ground at all. So use um, isolated power supply. Uh, you can use just a tiny little transformer. Uh, linear transformer even so once you push that button or switch uh, then the power instead of going from the projector goes through the second diode into the relay triggering the screen down once you open the switch the screen goes back up and the reason for the diode is that there is no uh, back feeding so for example if the projector is plugged in but switched off and you want to put the screen down you connect this if those diodes aren't there you're going to be back feeding uh, into the projector and same the other way around if say your switch is closed and you turn the projector on you don't want it back feeding into the power supply so the diodes will keep it separate diodes uh, i use the standard uh, one and four zero zero sevens uh, they will be just fine for this application the relays are uh, like i said single pole dual throw uh, 12 volt relay uh what else that's that's pretty much it there's not much else there standard barrel uh, 5.5 by 2.1 and yeah so now let's go and uh, test this out
So now that the screen is done, uh, as you can see, that was a normal up and down position. Now we've replaced it with a switch that just turns the screen on. And I've got this uh, 12 volt battery just to show you what happens when you apply the power to it. So I'm gonna apply the power. And as I click on, the screen comes down, as you can see. So that would the projector be doing. So now the projector is on, it outputs the power, the screen's coming down. Now that the projector is off, the screen's going back up. So now you've converted a cheap screen from uh, Amazon, which was motorized already, of course, into the uh, connectable screen to the projector. So that's all it takes, and that's just a main switch. So if I turn that off and plug it in, nothing will happen. Main power on, and bang, the screen comes down. Projector power off the screen goes back up. Very simple, very simple construction. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There'll be plenty of more videos coming up very soon. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. My name is Max. Bye.